So good evening all. I'm Dr. Chaitali Nikam, GM. I'm heading infectious diseases portfolio at ThyroCare. Welcoming all the participants and the panelists to the series of webinar conducted in collaboration with ThyroCare and Haystack Analytics, IIT Bombay on whole genome sequencing team. Some of the biggest challenges in drug resistant tuberculosis treatment are low compliances, high defaulting rate, and physicians are not able to give the right drugs because of delayed and incomplete diagnosis. The programmatic management of drug resistant TB in line with the global recommendation has introduced several regimens, including newer drugs for DRTB. However, personalized treatment and apt regimen will be effective only when the drug susceptibility profile is known across all groups of drugs in TB management. Based on this, we at ThyroCare started the branch of infectious diseases focused TB four years back. It is a state of our TB diagnostic facility powered by ThyroCare and focused on affordable and quality TB diagnostics which is associated with IPAC and accredited with NTEP, NADL, and CAP. Haystack Analytics, it is a health, Haystack Analytic, it is a health stick startup, building cutting edge genomics technology for accurate and personalized critical decision. It is incubated at Sign IIT Mumbai and supported by the DBT, Government of India. Also, it is a part of a startup programs of Intel and GE Healthcare. So with this, I, I'll just introduce the agenda for today's webinar. It will be presentation by Dr. Anchit Bhatnagar to start with, then followed by presentation by Soumya Dhawan, and which has been followed later on by question and answer session. So with this, I'll introduce our first speaker, who is Dr. Anchit Bhatnagar. He's an assistant professor in Therna Speciality Hospital and Research Center, Nadi Mumbai. He's a consultant pulmonologist in Ashirwad Hospital. He's awarded with the appreciation and recognition for saving the lives during the stampede. He is awarded outstanding performance in 2016 Chess Challenge India competition conducted by American College of a Chest Physician. He's an ex-senior resident of Department of Pulmonary Medicine at D.Y. Patil Hospital. LTMG Hospital, KM Hospital, and JJ Hospital, Mumbai. I welcome you on board, Dr. Anchit. Our next speaker is Dr. Soumya Dhawan. She is currently working as a microbiologist and NTP program, Madhya Pradesh, awarded by the Doctor of a Philosophy degree in bioinformatics from the Maulana Azad National Institute of Technology, Bhopal. She is a member of National Technical Committee for Updation of STDC Guidelines and National Level Expert Microbiologist Group formed by CTD. She is a trainer of NTEP guidelines in Madhya Pradesh and technical expert for the program in MPHSCL. She has published numerous research papers in national and international conferences and journals. I welcome on board Dr. Soumya. So before we go, there are two ways to ask to the questions. One can put up your question into a box or a chat box. You can mention the speaker's name along with your questions to whom you'd like to ask and moderator will announce your name before asking the question. Or you can directly raise your hand and if you want to ask a question, moderator will call your name for the question and kindly unmute yourself before asking the question. So with this, I'll start with this webinar with our first speaker, Dr. Anchit Bhatnagar. Over to you, Dr. Anchit. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this kind information, Dr. Jigali. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are, Dr. Anchit. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, can someone please share the presentation? Sure. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so uh, we'll be uh, dealing with the uh, importance of uh, various modalities which we use in the diagnosis of tuberculosis, and uh, as well as the uh, treatment and the uh, various problems which we faced in clinical practice when we are uh, dealing with uh, the drug-resistant TB. Uh, 
uh, as we know that the, that the current uh, uh, guidelines, which is set by the International Tuberculosis Elimination Program, that is the NTEP, has replaced RETCP, which was which used to uh, exist earlier. Now uh, it is known as uh, NTEP. So. Uh, despite all the good efforts done by uh, all of us, uh, the national NTEP misses 10% of drug sensitive and 50% of drug resistant uh, cases. That is as per the India TP report in 2020. And this makes our task a little bit uh, difficult because we as physicians, we rely on TP diagnosis on uh, via two methods. That is number one, either through subjective methods, that is the clinical and periodological uh, signs and symptoms of deep tuberculosis, as well as the radiological picture. And that uh, the other modality is a definitive, that is the pathological and microbiological correlation. So uh, when we are dealing with TB patients, it is very important for us to have some kind of uh, uh, microbiological or pathological correlation before we uh, try to set an appropriate TB regime. Starting a patient on uh, empirical ATT is uh, something which is uh, obsolete now and should not be attempted unless we have we are left with no choice so what are the various ways we can do that uh, basically it is divided into two parts uh, the phenotyping method that is what we see as a growth or the presence of bacteria or, or growth in culture versus the uh, genotyping methods that in, in which we are uh, testing for the presence of the uh, tb bacillus dna so uh, phenotypically we can do it by microscopy and culture and uh, uh, geotypically, there are various, various modalities like gene expert, true not, and line progress. So, uh, uh, I will not go into too much detail about the uh, various technical aspects of uh, uh, the sample collection, DNA extraction, sequencing. Uh, we'll deal with the primarily with the clinical aspects of, uh, uh, of TB diagnosis and the various modalities which we have now. Uh, we have something known as the whole genome sequence, which gives us a complete idea of the genomic picture of the uh, TB bacillus we are facing. So I'm showing you uh, the presence of 18 drugs, which can be tested by whole genome sequencing. Uh, what we do is we look for the various genes which are showing mutations. And as you know, the first that, that the anti tuberculosis drugs are divided into two parts, the first line and the second line. And also, uh, I mean, that is how it was traditionally divided. Nowadays, the WHO has given a classification that it's divided to group one, two, group two, and group three. Anyhow, uh, you can see the genes which are present. The, the drugs like Rifamsin is checked by RPO B, uh, B gene, as only as it by NHA and CAT G frequently, it have been by ATH A and B, paracinamide by PNCA. Uh, I will not talk about second line injectables because uh, we are phasing them out. Uh, moxifloxacin is also checked by uh, GYRA and GYRB. And interestingly, in whole genome sequencing, we can check for resistance to pedoclin and delaminate also, which is not, uh, uh, which is lacking in other uh, modalities, uh, in, uh, not lacking in the liquid culture and uh, subsequent DST. So, uh, the, this whole genome sequencing, it, like I said before, it provides a resistance profile to all 18 uh, drugs which are used for uh, antitubular treatment. It covers all the group A and group B uh, drugs. So I have a separate uh, slide showing group A, group B, and group C drugs, but I'll just enumerate. Uh, the group A drugs, they are the pedicillin, um, uh, the uh, levofloxacin or uh, moxifloxacin, and uh, linozolid. And group B drugs are cyclosidin and Just hang on. Uh, group B drugs are cyclosine and clofacinin, and group C drugs are the uh, uh, a lot of the other uh, uh, traditionally used uh, anti TB drugs like etamvitol, uh, delaminate, paracinamide, uh, imipenem, uh, and so on. So at this point, we should also understand the difference between uh, what uh, tuberculosis relapse and reinfection means, because this uh, part is covered by the presence by testing the sample for whole genome sequencing. So first we understand what relapse is. That is a recurrence of an origin infection. It means that the patient who got infected by a particular strain, like strain X, he undergoes complete treatment, but this bacillus uh, remains as a latent DB in his body. And then uh, after some time, after a few years or whatever, it gets endogenously reactivated and then causes infection, uh, causes uh, uh, the disease again. Whereas uh, the infection is what uh, 
happens is when the strain gets completely cured and the patient develops reinfection caused by some other strain of the bacteria. So relapse can be differentiated from reinfection by using the whole genome sequencing. And there's something about mixed infections also. Uh, you have conditions where um, both the strains can infect the uh, patient at the same time, and both can remain as latent infection in the body, and uh, can, can get, uh, undergo relapse at a later time in the future and cause big strain infections. Or a patient who is having a single strain then can have a super infection with a, a st other, another strain, and that can remain latent or possibly infection. Why we are concerned about big infections and all this is because uh, it causes a lot of difficulty in management of patients because uh, there's a, a, a difficult, uh, using conventional testing, it is difficult to test for their profiles and it leads to poorer uh, treatment outcomes. Now, this problem is also again sorted out by the use of uh, uh, newer modalities like whole genome sequencing. So, I'll just give you a brief idea about the existing, uh, existing genotypic methods. We have something called a gene expert, which uh, uh, detect, uh, detects the presence of uh, the mycobacterium tuberculosis DNA, and it also uh, uh, detects the presence or absence of resistance of rifampicin. So, as you can see, it is uh, limited only to rifampicin. It does not target all the mutations covering rifampicin. And therefore, we are based only on the uh, uh, guidelines or on the GFAT report tells us. So the advantage is that the, is we should have the report. So uh, we can then start appropriate treatment. But then we are forced to, uh, uh, we have to, we are forced to uh, reconcile with the fact that all the mutations are not getting checked. Uh, something better than uh, Gene Expert is Gene Expert Ultra. Uh, it is also faster than uh, your normal Gene Expert. And it, it targets at least two and uh, uh, two genes that is the IS six double one zero and IS one zero eight one. Basically, the gene expert ultra is more sensitive, sensitive and specific. And then we have the phenotypic method, which uh, already uh, like the liquid culture, which I told you, that is also known as a mycobacterium growth inhibitor tube, that is MGITs, and a solid cultures, that is uh, LG media. So both of them, they suffer from a very long uh, turnover time that in the liquid culture, the growth takes around 42 days. In solid culture, it is around 84 days. So by that time, the patient is lost to follow up or maybe it develops complications uh, due to inappropriate regimen. So uh, while we do all these phenotypic methods, we are uh, hindered by the uh, inability of timely reforms. And uh, all the drugs are again not uh, uh, covered by phenotypic methods, like I told you before, only 14 drugs. So there's a lack of accuracy and reproducibility, and then the cost factor is also there. So, uh, with whole genome sequencing, you can see that almost all the antibiotics are having a very high profile of for sensitivity and specificity. All of them are above 90%. There's also a very good agreement between the uh, uh, what we see in the culture DST versus uh, whole genome sequencing, uh, you know, more than 90% as compared to DST versus LPA and DST versus CD9. So what are the advantages? Uh, we can see that it detects genome sequence uh, variants to predict DV drug resistance, phenotypes and tight uh, treatment decisions. It overcomes challenges associated with conventional phenotypic testing. It overcomes limitations of other uh, less comprehensive molecular testing by providing rapid, detailed sequence information. So uh, it also tests for presence of petrol resistance or a mix of multiple genetic population of clinical sample. It, uh, uh, so uh, you can just see the uh, graph which I'm showing you here. Uh, the various turnover times are, have been shown here. Uh, CBNR takes around three to four days, the first line LPA around one week. And uh, culture uh, DST methods, uh, that is a liquid culture around 42 to 60 days, something in that range. So in that time, if we have something which can guarantee us uh, the, which can cover all the uh, antitypical drugs, the mutation sequencing, if we get that, that is definitely uh, better than relying on, on, uh, on a conventional 14 drug DST. So who can benefit from this? Uh, patients on whom drug resistance is suspected, patients with bacteriologically confirmed TB, uh, patients with Samson res resistant TB, uh, patients in whom first line therapy has failing or has failed, patients in whom the second line therapy has failed, uh, patients where relapse of MTB infection has occurred, 
patients who initiated first line uh, anti tb drugs and the therapy got discontinued due to whatever reason and they, they and we have to reinitiate the uh, therapy patients who have underlying uh, poor morbid conditions like diabetes so i'm just showing you a report a format of uh, what we see uh, you can see all the 18 drugs have been shown here uh, the basic uh, drugs like rifampicin has come to be detected for uh, uh, drug resistance so definitely it is mdr plus additionally we can see that it is uh, uh, resistant to moxifloxacin uh, that is a fluoroquinolone so it is a case of uh, pre xgrtv whereas linozolid is remain sensitive the bidaclin remains sensitive. So we have a case of a pre-XGRT, for which an appropriate regimen can be easily uh, uh, carried out. So when we are testing, when we are doing whole gene sequencing, uh, the first process is to grow the sample in the uh, traditional manner. And when the uh, sample is grown, then we subject it to whole genome sequencing. So the uh, test time can be around 12 days. The specificity around 99.8 percent sensitivity is also around 85 to 98 and it is able to identify mixed infections and co-infections and uh, i'm not sure if uh, this is very well visible uh, yeah i hope it is uh, you can read it uh, i'll just uh, clarify it So if you uh, focus on this, uh, whenever a patient of presumptive uh, TB comes to us, so what is presumptive TB? Any patient who has got uh, cough with expiration longer than two weeks, uh, fever longer than two weeks, significant weight loss, uh, and other constitution uh, symptoms. And in case of extrapolary TB, it's the organ-specific symptoms like uh, lymph node swelling, cervical lymph node swelling, or GI symptoms, or joint symptoms, or, or whatever. Uh, this patient is, uh, is to be treated by, has, uh, has, the sample has to go to CB nut first, as well as the X-ray. And in that, first we can do, uh, what we do is, we get the MTP directed, which could be uh, MTP directed uh, or MTP not directed. If MTP directed, then it automatically checks for the Samson sensitivity also. And if the Samson sensitive is present, then, it, uh, then the patient is started on uh, uh, first-line anti-TB drugs and it uh, automatically uh, should be tested for something known as first-line LPA. In LPA, we are checking for both isoniazid and rifampicin resistance. So, uh, LPA confirms the presence of uh, rifampicin sensitivity and rules out isoniazid resistance also, which is also seen in the green part over here. And if the patient is having MTB directed and rifampicin resistant, so the patient is to be subjected to a first-line LPA as well as second-line LPA and liquid culture DST to look for additional uh, resistance to fluoroquinolones and to label it as a pre-XGR or a simple MDR-TV and then proceed accordingly. The treatment regimen on how to treat T uh, TB is very well uh, established in this uh, chart. We just try to enlarge it. This is as per an NTAB. So any patient who's having drug susceptible TB uh, we give him a, a two months uh, uh, treatment of HRZD and four months continuation. That is the intensive phase and four months continuation phase of HRE. And in a case of H mono or polydrug resistant TB. So uh, before I uh, go on this, I should uh, tell you some definitions. Uh, drug sensitive TB are those in which all the capacitors is, is, is uh, sensitive to both all the first line drugs. In uh, drug resistant TB, it can be uh, H mono uh, resistant TB in which the bacillus is resistant to as only and sensitive to rifampicin. It could be a uh, rifampicin resistant TB or also known as MDR TB in which the drug is sensitive to rifampicin. So if the uh, if the uh, bacillus is uh, resistant to rifampicin, it is automatically taken as a MDR TB. Then we have uh, something was XDR TB in which uh, apart from resistance to the first line drugs like isoniazid rifampicin, there's an additional uh, resistance to uh, fluoroquinolone as well as uh, any other uh, group one uh, drug like linozolid or bidoquinolone. And then we have something as pre XDR TB in which, uh, apart from MDR uh, uh, bacillus, uh, there's resistance to uh, 
neofoxacin only, but sensitivity sensitivity to the other group one drugs. So when we are having H mono uh, resistant TB, the uh, treatment achievement is six months of neofoxacin along with uh, rifampicin, uh, thambutol, and paracinamide. Uh, and in uh, MDR TB, then we have three options when we are having MDR TB or XDR TB. Uh, things are now quite simplified from what it used to be, what it used to be before. Uh, we are uh, phasing out the uh, injectable drugs now, and no new patient is to be started on this regimen from April of 2022. So I will not elaborate the injectable containing drugs. I will talk about the shorter oral beta containing regimen and the oral longer uh, beta containing regimen. So uh, if the patient is to be started on short, shorter oral uh, beta uh, regimen. He should be given uh, uh, four to six months of uh, pedaculin, uh, along with six months of leofloxacin, clofazimin, uh, parazinamide, thambutol, hydros, INH, and ethanamide, and five months of leofloxacin, clofazimin, parazinamide, and thambutol. And those, uh, of course, uh, uh, basic criteria for start, uh, starting this uh, uh, regimen, uh, there are some, uh, 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 some, some factors which have to be taken into account that the patient should not have uh, uh, taken any any kind of fluoroquinolone for more than one month previously, and uh, patient should have a, a DST which is which shows sensitivity to all the fluoroquinolones, and so this has to be taken into account. The second regimen which we are giving more commonly is the oral longer uh, MDR or HDR regimen that consists of uh, uh, eighteen to twenty months twenty months of both the group one and group two uh, drugs, that is the leofoxacin, bidaclin, and lenocinate, along with clofazimin and cyclosin. So uh, if this regimen is appropriately managed by, and this patient is tolerating this regimen, we can simply continue. Or if there is some problem which comes out to be later, later on in the five months or four months culture reports, then we can taper the lenocinate to half uh, to the 50% uh, of its uh, original uh, dosage. And we can also add on or substitute the uh, initial group one of group two drugs with uh, group C drugs also to uh, make a proper regimen. We also something known as TB preventive treatment now. Uh, for all the contacts of TB patients, we give uh, either six months of daily isoniazid monotherapy or uh, or uh, three months of weekly rifapentin and isoniazid uh, therapy. That is once a week dose. Such twelve doses are to be given or six months uh, of uh, daily leoflaxis. Leofoxacin that is to be given to all contacts of MDR or RR uh, TB uh, uh, patients with uh, fluoroquinolone sensitive index, and four months or daily uh, uh, rifampicin uh, can be also given to those who are suffering to the contacts of those who are suffering from H resistant uh, H poly H, H mono resistant TB. So these are the groups uh, which I told you already. So group one is uh, whenever we are devising the uh, longer uh, uh, DRTB regimen, all the three group A uh, medications should be given. That is either leofoxacin or oxyfoxacin or uh, pedoclin or linosulate. And uh, we have to also add uh, one or both drugs of the group B medication that is clofazimin and cyclosyrin. And then we have to, if it's required, then we can complete a regimen with group, uh, when uh, medicines from group A and group B cannot be used to due to whatever uh, side effects which the patient experiences. So that has to be given in that order, which I, I'm showing you, Ambitol, Delamid, Parazinamide, Mipenem, Celestin, Amicas. Uh, uh, nowadays, we don't talk, talk about uh, second line injectables, but it is shown here as Amicas and Ethanamide and us. So I'm just showing a sample report also. Uh, this patient, uh, yeah, he underwent a WGS and uh, it came out to be as only as it in terms of resistant as well as resistance to other uh, first line drugs like Ethambidol. And in group A, he came out to be resistant to moxifloxacin, whereas sensitive to linozolid and bidapinol. So uh, based on this only, although we don't need uh, to worry about uh, drugs like Ethambidol and the septomycin resistance, we can Confirm that the patient is now developed pre XDR TB. He's no longer a case of MDR. And this report have, will reach me within uh, maximum 1, 1 to 42 days, or maybe around that much time. So I can then immediately uh, modify the treatment. Uh, the patient is on, uh, uh, if he's on the leofoxacin, then I can uh, think about giving him high dose moxifloxacin. 
and if it is uh, the if the so again uh, oxyprofluorescein high dose can be given only if the low dose oxyprofluorescein sensor uh, resistance is there or i can then simply stop that and i can add drugs from group c i will not go too much into details about this i think it will be covered uh, by dr somya another one of the reports uh, this one uh, is also showing the resistance to tamsin and uh, in, in the group a drug it is showing resistance to uh, fluoroquinolones all the fluoroquinolones and as well as sildenafil so this is a total uh, complete xdr patient again uh, we can see uh, various uh, sensitive sensitive pattern that the patient has beta pyrin sensitivity which is not uh, uh, checked in the conventional dst reports so uh, we can make a appropriate beta pyrin containing uh, regimen here by taking at least beta pyrin from group a and uh, group b drug again clopidogrel is sensitive and we can then add on from group c there are so many drugs which are given in, in the uh, order avoiding second line injections so because of this uh, so many uh, uh, scenarios our job as clinicians become very easy uh, this is a complete uh, uh, patient who is who's having having absolutely no resistance whatsoever he is a case of drug sensitive tb so uh, obviously uh, clinicians would have started him by now on the first line atd drugs so that is confirming his uh, that uh, uh, the patient was was is on the right track and uh, no further testing is required uh in this one there is resistance to isomy acid to pamsin so that is the mdr and uh, uh group a drugs are all sensitive so he will go for a what i will give him is that uh, oral uh, longer uh, uh, pediatric uh, pediatric regimen which we have already discussed so i will now just uh, share some cases where i faced some problems because i uh, the whole gene sequencing was not available to me at that time so there was one patient a 22 year female who came to me with the complaints of cough with hemoptysis fever and weight loss the sputum was done the gene expert showed mtp detected pamsin resistant and because it was a pamsin resistant case i had to subject the patient to first line lpa and second line lpa and liquid culture dst and uh, the second line lpa showed additional leofloxacin resistance that report came to me and mgit was of this i had been all previously sent uh, the rep report for mgit culture is still awaited and uh, because the patient has already been uh, detected with leofloxacin resistance i have to modify it to a pre xdr regimen uh, unfortunately so far the patient is still not showing any improvement although the disease is not very extensive based on the clinical profile and the radiological profile uh, i am suspecting that it could be because of additional beta pyrin resistance which i cannot catch because the uh, whole gene sequencing could not be done similar case was also there a uh, 58 year old male who had long standing backache and difficulty on standing uh, he was admitted under neurosurgeon and he did a mri which showed a paravertebral abscess and he did a open surgery and the pus was then sent for Uh, all the uh, uh, usual uh, modalities like gene expert and lpa and dst but whole genome sequencing could not be done because it was uh, not available at that time so gene expert showed the pamsin resistance lpa showed additional leofloxacin resistance uh, high dose moxifloxacin was substituted in place of leofloxacin and mgit confirmed the findings that afp was poor dst also confirmed the presence of uh, leofloxacin at uh, resistance along with parazinamide and antithonamide Uh, unfortunately this patient uh, developed severe anemia with neutropenia because of which i was supposed to lower this zeroacidic dosing after 4 to 5 months and we have repeated the mri which is showing mild resolution with subsequent uh, reappearance which occurred on after some time uh, patient symptomatically still has some backache uh, again the the question of additional resistance to pediculu is is probable because this patient is uh, severely diabetic and uh, maybe he is having immuno compromised uh, because this immunity is already challenged so i cannot now check it for that because his pus is now inoperable and uh, we are again forced with the problem of lack of wgs which was there uh, which was not there uh, last year so uh, with this i finish my presentation and
I hand over to Dr. Sohail. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anjit, for your comprehensive information about the diagnostics, the burden, as well as the treatment and the reporting part. Without wasting the time, I'll call upon our second speaker, Dr. Soumya, to please take it ahead. Thank you. I would like to tell you, should you unmute yourself? I hope my voice is audible now and my screen is also visible. Yeah, everything is perfect. Yeah. Th thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chatali, uh, for the uh, introduction given very nicely. And also uh, a great presentation given by Dr. Achan. Uh, so here today, I'll be discussing about the paradigm shift in the TB diagnosis. Uh, from the title itself, it must be clear to everybody uh, like what uh, what will be what I'll be discussing today. What kind of uh, shift or what kind of paradigm shift which has been happened in the TB diagnostic uh, act, uh, you know activities in the NTP program uh, in the current uh, you know last century or uh, what exactly is happening at present and also what the program is foreseen uh, after the uh, identification or after the leaps and bounds uh, that had been happened in the last century that we will be. Uh, looking uh, into in this presentation. So this basically, uh, you know, uh, what happened is that this basically initiated a change in the, uh, you know, diagnostic modality from basically from the phenotypic to the genotypic methods. Uh, the phenotypic includes smear microscopy, liquid as well as solid cultures, and to the uh, shifting to the genotypic methods uh, that include uh, many of the uh, technologies which Dr. Achind already had discussed, which we will have a, uh, you know, we'll also have a glimpse of all these technologies basically uh, uh, this is what the transition which the country actually needs for achieving the strategic goals of the NTEP program and also to the elimination of tuberculosis by early diagnosis and early treatment initiation of TB as well as uh, drug resistant TB. So moving into the next slide. So this is uh, uh, the uh, you know the global tuberculosis report uh, 2021. It uh, shows that basically uh, there are around uh, the global 20 uh, global TB report 2021 shows the high burden of uh, uh, TB incidence as well as mortality in India, which again contributing towards the uh, you know country's mortality as well as incident by uh, 37 percentage and 28 percentage uh, respectively. That again in turn uh, you know emphasizing the need of a uh, greater technology. Uh, advancement in the diagnosis, uh, which is again the uh, need of time. So this is the glimpse of uh, the diagnostic uh, expansion, uh, which has been happened uh, in the uh, NTP program. Uh, basically, uh, this starts from the microscopic centers and, uh, you know, clinically for the diagnosis, uh, clinical diagnosis can be done by the radiological methods that include the x-ray and uh, we also have NAT facility that include both the CPNET as well as the TrueNet facility and LPA, this is also again a molecular technology and we also have the culture DST expansion by using the solid as well as liquid culture uh, medium. So what are the TB diagnostic laboratory uh, methods which we actually told us uh, uh, is all about the tools for uh, microbiological confirmation of TB under the program as acceptable methods for microbiological diagnosis include we already discussed one is the sputum smear microscopy which is available in our designated microscopic center starting from the designated microscopic uh, center which also include the the techniques include the zeal nielsen staining as well as the fluorescence fluorescent staining depending upon the load of the uh, you know laboratory technician or the load of the laboratory and also uh, uh, depends upon whether it's a diagnostic sample or also a follow-up sample uh, in turn uh, depends upon the laboratory's uh, uh, you know uh, workflow and second is a rapid molecular diagnostic techniques that include the nucleic acid amplification test uh, which involves uh, the cpnet as well as the trunet and uh, the second one of the in the rapid molecular diagnostic testing involves the line probe assay for both the first line as well as second line anti-tb drugs 
the third methodology which we have is the culture that include uh, you know the both the solid as well as the liquid culture solid medium which is the lowest steam jensen medium though uh, the program uh, has uh, you know uh, is not recommending to go for a solid medium but the laboratory still prefer to go uh, with a solid backup in order to maintain their proficiency and the second one is the automated liquid culture system that include the backpack midget 960 the mycobacterium growth indicator tube as already mentioned by dr rachin this is uh, the one which is seen here it's of 960 uh, that is uh, that means the, uh, it has a capacity of 960 we also have 340 uh, uh, you know uh, machine with a capacity of 340 and uh, the uh, the last methodology is the drug sensitivity testing by means of both solid as well as uh, uh, liquid medium we can do the drug sensitivity test but again uh, with respect to the turnaround time taken the, sol uh, the solid medium has been discontinued from the program and we are presently focusing only on the uh, drug sensitivity testing by means of liquid medium So just we'll just have a quick glimpse of all these technology. What is the turnaround time uh, in uh, these technology, and uh, specifically about the sensitivity uh, gained by means of these technology? So uh, in case of Zeal Nielsen, uh, the microscopy, the solid as well as uh, you know the solid culture, it is around two to three days and the thirty to sixty days accordingly uh, or respectively. And the sensitivity gain is the baseline sensitivity. And second comes the introduction of uh, after two thousand seven, we introduced the liquid culture facilities. Uh, uh, with a turnaround time of 15 to 30 days uh, and again in turn depending upon the you know sample uh, in turn depending upon the bacterial load in the sample so the sensitivity gained is uh, uh, plus 10 percentage compared with that of the lowest in jensen solid medium and uh, the third one is the line prop assay the turnaround time is about uh, two to four days uh, both for first line as well as second line inject uh, second line anti tb drugs and uh, the led fluorescent microscopy again it was been introduced in 2009 10 uh, and uh, uh, basically uh, it, uh, it has been uh, uh, you know uh, expanded into those diagnostic microscopic centers where there is a high load uh, the load has calculation basic uh, depends upon the number of slides which the lte is reviewing uh, the sensitivity of this again is plus 10 percentage compared to that of the Zeal Nielsen methodology. We also have, uh, uh, you know, uh, the CBNET uh, uh, as well as TrueNet methodology uh, with equal uh, sensitivity and specificity and the turnaround time is to, uh, two hours, whereas uh, uh, in case of, uh, you know, uh, the diff only difference is that the CBNET is a closed system and the TrueNet is a, uh, you know, a kind of an open system wherein CBNET do uh, the assay uh, in a single test simultaneously Obviously, uh, by means of single test, it, it gives you the uh, uh, detection, you know, uh, it gives, gives you the report of whether TB is there or not, as well as whether the resistance uh, towards rifampicin is there or not. And in case of TrueNet, uh, uh, TrueNet is a two-step essay, which is a chip-based essay again, uh, which gives, a, uh, you know, uh, uh, same sense, which has the same sensitivity and specificity pattern compared to that of the CBNet. And uh, uh, this is also uh, takes around 60 to uh, 60 minutes per, uh, you know, essay. That is the turnaround time of the technology. The turnaround time uh, in turn depends upon uh, the uh, when the sample has reached that particular laboratory. So the revised PMD, PMD, uh, PMDT guidelines, the programmatic drug resistant TB guidelines 2021, uh, which has been released on 24th March, again reinforcing the need or, uh, you know, the, it again emphasis the need of transition from the phenotypic to genotypic method, as well as it also emphasis on a, on the, uh, the major paradigm shift, which I want to speak about is about the whole genome sequencing. What is the need of whole genome sequencing? Why it is important? All these things have been uh, highly been emphasis, emphasis uh, in this programmatic drug resistant tuberculosis, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, TB management guidelines. Uh. So as already discussed, detection of drug resistance and susceptibility, the drug resistance testing can be done by means of genotypic method, considering the turnaround time. Now, nowadays, we are focusing on the universal DST method, wherein uh, the patient is being directly offered uh, the upfront modalities of uh, NAT facility and uh, consistently, uh, you know, the sample is being moved towards LPA. And the only problem is that we cannot use this for understanding the treatment response, whereas in case of drug susceptibility testing, the phenotypic tests are being used wherein the bacilli are grown and subsequently been tested for drug susceptibility using various drug containing as well as drug free medium and this can be used for different type of drugs in case of first line drugs like uh, rifampicin isomy acid uh, ethambutol and uh, you know pyrazinamide and in case of second line drugs is like uh, streptomycin uh, uh, levofloxacin moxifloxacin canamycin uh, uh, amikacin captiomycin 
Lena solid, uh, clovazamine, betaclin, and delanamide. Uh, these are, uh, you know, the newer drugs, which again, uh, you know, if you want to understand what is exactly happening in the country after the introduction of uh, the newer drug, whether the, what are the kind of resistant patterns, we are still depending upon one or two uh, uh, certified laboratories like the NIRT uh, Delhi and uh, NPI Bangalore and all for understanding the uh, resistance uh, in, uh, uh, in the public health system. And uh, uh, that again, you know, not to have a surveillance, we should also uh, have uh, the understanding, better understanding about what exactly is happening in the patients who is under the pedagogy treatment. We also need to, uh, you know, introduce the whole genome sequencing methodology as early as possible as a diagnostic modality. So expanding the use of NAT, uh, as already discussed, we have NAT in NTEP program for the diagnosis of drug sensitive, uh, you know, sensitive as well as drug resistant TB. It, uh, by means of a single step assay, it gives two uh, important results, whether TB is there or not, as well as uh, uh, it gives a report about rifampicin resistant within a, a span of two hours. And uh, the, uh, the program also have, uh, um, you know, uh, machines with different uh, capacity that starting from four module capacity to eight module as well, even the 16 module ones are also available uh, you know uh, 16 module ones are also available as already discussed uh, this uh, doesn't require much of the technical expertise from the technician uh, and also this is a closed uh, system uh, so lesser contamination is expected and there is no requirement of specific biosafety practices so this can be uh, you know um, expanded to the uh, root level laboratories wherein uh, there is no need of a biosafety requirement because minimum handling by the technical person involved and the detection is basically based on the rifampicin resistance via the uh, by targeting the RPOB gene. This is all about the sensitivity of NAT. Uh, and the one need to uh, understand is that this uh, uh, technique is good for all specimens ex except uh, blood, urine, and stool. As we all know, blood is a PCR inhibitor. The technique behind this, uh, um, you know, uh, the system is a PCR. So we, uh, the PCR will be always a blood inhibitor. You know, a PC uh, blood will be always a PCR inhibitor. So we cannot go for blood. And uh, the, for urine and stool, the program doesn't uh, have a, uh, you know, SOPs available. Now the introduction of expert MTB XDR uh, XDR cartridges are also available uh, at present. Though it has been WHO endorsed, uh, it detects mutations associated with resistance towards uh, isoni acid, fluoroquinolone, second line injectables, and ethanomide in a single test within 90 minutes. That is again a paradigm shift once it gets introduced in the program. Uh, you can also see that resistant, you know, the drug resistant associated, uh, you know, uh, uh, with the detection is almost similar. The target regions are almost. Similar similar to that of the LPA. So uh, this will give a, a resistant, this will give a better uh, understanding about the resistant patterns uh, within less span of time when compared to that of LPA. The only thing is that this test can be run on GeneXpert platform equipped with 10 color modules. And this is also potentially, uh, you know, necessary because uh, uh, as we all know that, uh, you know, while uh, ruling out the fluoroquinolone resistance, uh, which is required before starting the sh shorter oral beta clean containing regimen, uh, containing MDR, RRT, regimen. Uh, the understanding about uh, the fluoroquinolone resistance is very much necessary. For in a setting uh, where the, uh, you know, uh, where there's only one particular lab or two particular lab and the complete state is dependent upon that particular lab. So these techniques will, uh, in fact, uh, help in improving the turnaround time as well as improving the early diagnosis as well as treatment initiation of that particular patient. Though it has been, as already I discussed, though it has been endorsed by WHO, the programs we need, uh, we still waiting for the green flag from the NTP programmer. Now coming to the second major technology, which is an Indian uh, 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 introduced technology that is again TrueNet, which is also a chip-based method, which I already discussed. It is a, uh, you know, uh, it is again a PCR-based te technology for the detection of TB as well as rifampicin resistance by using three different chips available: the TrueNet MTB chip, TrueNet MTB Plus chip, and the TrueNet MTB. Uh, 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 DX chip. Uh, this uh, DX chip is basically used for the uh, samples found to be MTB positive. This chip may be used as a follow-up, uh, uh, follow-up on follow follow-on test for the detection of rifampicin resistance using the same uh, DNA which has been allocated uh, uh, from the sample. So the targeted genes are almost similar. The only thing which we need to focus is that the LOD, uh, the limit of detection uh, in case of MTB assay is around uh, 100 CFU per ml. And in case of MTB plus assay, it is around 30 CFU per ml. And uh, the, for the RIF uh, uh, assay, this is again focusing only on the RPOB gene. 
So the choice of uh, modality uh, has been divided into first, second, and third choice according to the diagnostic algorithm. Also, this is like uh, the first uh, first choice is the NAT or the LPA, and second will be the liquid culture isolation and LPA uh, DST, and third is the liquid culture isolation and the liquid DST. Uh, all these are depending upon depending upon the turnaround time and uh, uh, also the uh, transition from the phenotypic to genotypic method. And the turnaround time includes as for solid LG, uh, as already discussed, it takes around 84 days and in case of liquid midget, uh, it takes around 42 days. In case of LPA, it is around 72 hours. And uh, in case of NAT, it is all, uh, it is, uh, we get the results in two hours. So this is the specimen uh, process algorithm at the culture DST lab. Let's have a look where, uh, you know, once the sample reaches the culture DST lab from the NAT center, the second sample, once it reaches the culture DST lab, the lab again re looks for the smear positiveness. If it is smear positive, then only that will go for the LPA. And if it is smear negative, it goes for a reverse channeling wherein liquid culture has been, will be done. And uh, then the sample will go for the LPA. So this is the basic flow uh, uh, in case of, uh, you know, um, uh, culture DST laboratory. So coming to the major paradigm shift in the diagnosis, which I was talking about is the DNA sequencing. As uh, uh, you know, as simply it is like, uh, it's, a, it's just an understanding what kind of nucleotide is being uh, positioned, what is the exact address of the nucleotide, uh, is, uh, is, is that what we are looking, in, uh, looking into. So this is a process of determining the precise order of nucleotide with the DNA molecule. The sequencing technologies of different generations are available, starting from the first generation, second generation, third generation, and fourth generation. Currently, we are using the fourth generation one, basically uh, with the improvement in technology as uh, and uh, you know uh, uh, as well as um, uh, uh, you know the first generation one. As I told, the starting one is the Sanger method, and the Maxim Gilbert method is the, basically the chemical uh, degradation method, which I can call. And uh, these are the listed platforms which is available in different kind of methodologies. And the fourth generation involves the Oxford nanopore technology, which we basically uh, are using recently. So in case of next generation sequencing, next generation sequencing uh, has actually been expanded from targeted sequencing to the whole genome sequencing uh, and even whole exome sequencing widely. So uh, what are the advantages is that uh, this is a high throughput DNA sequencing. Techniques employs micro as well as nanotechnologies. It reduces the sample size and the low reagent cost and leather time. Massive parallel sequencing sequence thousands of sequences at one glance, and even you know, even we can uh, even you can pool the libraries and do the sequencing, produce enormous amount of data for uh, uh, you know uh, other researchers as well as for the surveillance. So uh, this is just a glance of the uh, you know uh, technique which we are doing, starting from the purification product. Uh, you know after PCR, the uh, uh, the product is being purified. The product is basically our DNA, and uh, setting of the reaction. And the, this cycle will be continued after the you know uh, during the amplification process. This cycle will be continued, and uh, next will be the sequencing. This is a simple uh, you know uh, 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 simple display of uh, what are the basic steps involved in a sequencing. And that last step will be the reading of uh, the order of terminators, which uh, include the sequence which help in sequencing in turn up. Now, coming to the whole genome sequ sequencing, the TB diagnosis, uh, uh, TB uh, WGS basically uh, uh, rapidly shows the exactly affecting MTB, including its complete drug resistant profile, and this allows the clinician to identify the best regimen to compact the disease. The implementation of TBS will, uh, will benefit the NTP for surveillance of the resistance to different anti TB drugs and also gives important information of high burden countries to set up control strategies, uh, 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 control strategies and priorities. As I already discussed, right now in the program, we are basically focusing on the survivalence. We should understand what is the mutation pattern, what are the strains available, what uh, kind of uh, strains are uh, or what kind of mutations are present in different geography. After that, this will be implemented in the diagnostic algorithm. Presently, this has been uh, you know, done in few of our national reference laboratory, uh, gradually will be expanded into uh, other laboratories, which is available in the uh, NTEP program. So these are the advantages that already been discussed by Dr. Rajin. Still, uh, uh, I'm just repeating it. Uh, it detects the mycobacterium tuberculosis, and it also detects the different kind of uh, uh, drug resistant patterns. It detects the mixed infection, gives an antibiogram of 18 drugs, which phenotypic DST can't give, basically. 
relatively the rapid turnaround time is around 10 to uh, 12 days which is again uh, you know uh, uh, which is again highly eye catching because uh, uh, the our major focus of the program or the you know the sdg goal is the early uh, uh, treatment initiation and early and accurate diagnosis so uh, the last one is the cost effective when compared to culture dst because it costs around around 3000 to 4000 uh, when uh, in case of culture dst the entire costing will be around 13 to 14000 so this is a, this is what the workflow is after uh, the first step is, will be the sample preparation either from a you know uh, from a solid media or from a uh, you know liquid media we need to prepare the sample the sample means the dna need to be isolated purified by means of uh, uh, different methodologies uh, one, uh, one of them is the gel electrophoresis and uh, you know after the purification of the dna we can after the extraction and purification one can go for the library preparation and even the qc of the library will be done and then goes for the sequencing and then uh, you know the output will be in the form of fasta cube files which can be uh, you know read uh, uh, which can be read after uh, you know uh, comparing with the uh, reference uh, genomic dna So these are the these are the major steps. There are only four steps involved uh, in any kind of sequencing method. The first one will be the library preparation, wherein the fragmentation of the DNA or the cDNA will be done. And uh, after fragmentation, this will be uh, you know ligated with any uh, different kind of adapters which is available. And after ligation, the PCR amplification will be done, and then the purification. This is all about the library preparation, and then cluster generation will be done, wherein the amp, you know these uh, these fragments will be basically loaded into a uh, you know platform where uh, uh, you know uh, uh, different uh, uh, oligonucleotides will be available, and this will be uh, a bridge amplification will be in turn contacting. And after the cluster, uh, after this cluster generation only the uh, entire fragments will be uh, ready for a whole genome uh, sequencing uh, basically uh, so uh, you know uh, in the sequencing and the data analysis as i already explained uh, we uh, do uh, in sequencing basically it's a reverse terminator analysis is uh, done in basically in illumina sequencing and in case of data analysis we uh, uh, we always refer this past the few files with a reference uh, we align and uh, do a reference with a uh, do a reading with a reference genomic dna uh, this is just an overview of library pre library preparation which already been discussed and uh, these are the applications of uh, the technology this new, uh, it uh, high, it is highly important it highly uh, you know important in identification of the mutation discovery right now whatever the modality is available we are just focusing on the targeted sequences which we already know these are the mutation which has been happening so uh, in case of wgs we could even identify uh, the si those silent mutations or new mutations etc even as you all know in tb uh, you know uh, all the all the mutations is basically a single nucleotide polymorphism either an adhesion or a deletion or any kind of mutation uh, it also help in transcriptome analysis sequencing clinical isolate in stream to reference mechanism enabling metagenomics defining a dna protein interaction discovering non coding rnas molecular diagnostics uh, for oncology and inherited disease study gene regulation analysis as well as exploring the chromatin uh, packaging. These are different applications of this technology. There are also limitations of this technology. NGS currently requires an advanced infrastructure structure in uh, uh, laboratory infrastructure and molecular expertise. That is why the program is a little bit uh, in the back, uh, you know, backside. And uh, the WGS faces challenges in programmatic integration by means of following the conventional method, routine laboratory workflow with the cost and technical barriers and infrastructure requirement, rigorous laboratory and the data management basically need a very good bioinformatic analysis person to understand those, uh, uh, you know, uh, those fasta q files and also to read and interpret those uh, you know uh, those reports specifically and also it is also very important that all the mutation which has been happening is not it doesn't have any clinical reference so uh, accurate reading of those uh, report is also very important understanding of the genetic uh, basis phenotypic drug resistance continues to evolve still so this is just a, a glimpse of uh, Illumina sequencing method, which already discussed each step uh, has already been discussed. Uh, Illumina sequencing is the one which we are currently using for TB diagnosis in WGS.
So coming to the summary of the NGS technology, these are different kinds of platform based on the read length and accuracy available. So there are Roche 544 starting from Roche 544, HiSec, MySec, and Solid, and uh, again, Pacific Bioscience, and many other ion torrent and Exitra are available. They have different read length as well as uh, you know, accuracy. Illumina is the most uh, you know, uh, 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 favored one. 90 percentage of the sequencing has been done in, in the in worldwide by using Illumina sequencing. So that's all about the WGS, and uh, I would say uh, the program should implement it in a uh, you know into a, into the diagnostic algorithm as early as possible for the better uh, uh, you know betterment of the patients as well as for the elimination uh, goals to achieve the elimination goals. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Dr. Dr. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Soumya, for such a lovely, wonderful, and comprehensive presentation and about the whole genome sequencing which we have discussed. Now, there are lots of to both of the speakers. I would like to inform the chat box is already open with the presentation. So many requests for the presentations for Dr. An Anchit as well as Dr. Soumya. Also, there are few of the people and the doctors who are requesting about the chart. So all the doctors and the and attend this, please note, you can just put on your uh, email address and we will provide the same to you via mail. Now going to the question and answer sessions, I'll take the first question. This is from uh, Mr. Vivek D, who is asking, which platform is preferred for whole genome sequencing of TB and why? I'm giving this question to Dr. Soumya. Uh, uh, Dr. Chetali, as I already discussed, Illumina is the most uh, favorable platform at present. Uh, be, it is again, uh, you know, because of its, uh, you know, uh, read length as well as because of its accuracy patterns. So hope this uh, suffices your answer. Now, next question, I would like to take it to Dr. Anshit. It is by Dr. Surendra Kumar Mishra. Uh, what is the prognosis of a patient of MDRTB patient suffering from diabetes? Yeah, okay. Uh, so basically, uh, any patient of diabetes will have a worse prognosis as compared to a patient who has a normal glucose uh, tolerance. Uh, if you have to take MDR-TB patient specifically, any patient five to 10 years back, or approximately 70% or 60 to 70% people suffering from this disease used to get, they used to uh, uh, get cured completely. Now this figure has uh, also improved because of the introduction of new drugs like beta and telemine. Diabetes, of course, is going to worsen the prognosis. Uh, I cannot comment on the per exact percentage about the, how much the uh, presence of diabetes is going to uh, uh, cause uh, uh, complication or uh, the poorer prognosis. I cannot comment on the exact figure, but diabetes per se is going to complicate our treatment. So strict diabetic control is very essential for any patient of any uh, disease, not just MTRTV, but any disease. Thank you, Dr. Anchit, for this answer. Now, next question is from Dr. Gohar Ahmad, who is a senior consultant at Pulmonologist at Fluorescence Hospital, Srinagar, Kashmir. He, he would like to know when a patient of tuberculosis is an attended ethambutol, it is important to do periodic eye examination. So, so uh, the, yeah, uh, this is a bit of a controversial question. Uh, I can just uh, give my own opinion on this. I usually do not check patients on uh, who are take, on the uh, ethambutol uh, regimen, the uh, ethambutol containing regimen for eye problems unless they develop some kind of symptoms. And if it is caught on, uh, after an ophthalmological uh, uh, examination, if there's a presence of ethambutol induced toxicity, it's very easy to eliminate ethambutol from the, at least from the first light uh, uh, regimen. Uh, the patient is on HRZ uh, for, for trans-sensitive uh, TB, then ethambutol can be successfully and easily removed. But routinely, I do not send them for uh, eye check-ins unless they have symptoms. Okay. Next question will be pointing to you again. Uh, by Dr. Ahmad, and he would like to know how can we prevent drug resistance in tuberculosis? So this is a very, very good question. And also I can emphasize on uh, so many things. Uh, the first, most important thing is uh, strict uh, uh, treatment adherence. Uh, what we see in practice is that patients, uh, they, they are started on anti tb drugs, but uh, they are not properly followed up or they don't come or whatever the reason is they stop their drugs or maybe they 
take it irregularly, they stop it for some days, or something else, some adherence is not uh, proper. For that reason, only we have uh, NTEP and NextShare, and so many guidelines are already in place for uh, uh, following up with these patients. Uh, second thing is that if the patient is also uh, suffering from comorbid diseases like diabetes or uh, HIV or on steroids for whatever reason, uh, or, what, or he's already immunocompromised, he has got low birth weight, he has a high chance of developing blood resistant TB. The third thing is uh, patient's habits, like if he is alcoholic or a chain smoker. Uh, Already, most of the, these drugs have got a drug-induced hepatotoxic uh, element, which could get uh, flared up due to presence of alcohol and other, other uh, substance abuses. So uh, that can also lead to termination of the anti-TP drugs, and then that can lead to uh, drug resistance. The most important thing, which is again very frequently seen in clinical practice, is that sometimes when the regimen is failing, uh, some Clinicians do tend to add a single drug to the regimen, uh, like levofloxacin being the most uh, in, uh, most commonly abused culprit. Uh, so you add a uh, levofloxacin to HRZE because you think that the regimen is failing. Then that also messes up the problem because uh, we don't ever add a single drug to a failing regimen. So. Uh, all these things have to be taken into consideration and we can then definitely hope to prevent drug resistance from development. I hope uh, this, again, this is a huge question, which a huge, requires a lot of uh, study from my side. I totally agree, Dr. Anshit. Dr. Chitali, I would like to add one point to this discussion. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, program in public health perspective, we are also focusing on, uh, you know, uh, preventing the, uh, uh, you know, occurrence of TB by means of giving chemoprophylaxis has already been discussed uh, uh, by Dr. Rachin. Uh, the, that is the major uh, drift in the uh, change of name even, like uh, from RNTCP to uh, National TB Elimination Program, wherein the pillar focus is one of the standard, you know, the SDG goal has been changed uh, uh, wherein we are also focusing on those, uh, uh, you know, uh, what I should say, हम वो dam को भी concentrate कर रहे जो कभी बाद बाद में फटेंगे और will have a load of TB patients. So we are also focusing on uh, the context of DSTB as well as DRTB patient doing chemo prophylaxis for uh, you know six months. Yeah. Thank you for the question, Samia. Now uh, next question is from the Dr. Saurabh Kumar. And uh, this question is pointing to Dr. Soumya. So has the whole genome sequencing been implemented in NTP program in any part of the country? Yes, yes. As I already discussed, the, as per the PMDT guideline, even in the launch of the World TB, uh, this time the World TB uh, Day celebration, the Union Minister itself has himself has focused uh, uh, on the introduction of whole genome sequencing, and this has already been doing in few of our national reference laboratory. Basically, in the program, there we have six national reference laboratory, and all the six national refer reference laboratories working in TB program, the uh, NIRT, the uh, 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 I'm sorry, NIRT uh, uh, Chennai is the uh, one who is. Uh, basically uh, working hard towards the implementation of the whole genome sequencing. And in case of, this is all about the public sector, in private sector, sir has already been shown uh, some report of Cytocare also, and also different, uh, you know, private uh, institution like Hinduja is also performing whole, whole genome sequencing. It is already there. We just want a red flag from, you know, green flag from the uh, NTP program. Um, that too will be after the, you know, uh, um, ex, uh, will uh, basically the program need a lot of data from those who are already performing. Uh, from that, we can understand what exactly is happening in the country and then accordingly they will implement this into the diagnostic algorithm. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so next question is again from Dr. Ahmed. So he wants to know how to complete the treatment of tuberculosis patient and its diet chart. This is for Dr. Anshit. Uh, can you just repeat the question? Yeah, sure. So, uh, how to complete treatment of tuberculosis patient and its diet chart? So, uh, so uh, yeah, no, uh, the treatment and uh, and uh, basically diet. Yeah. So, uh, at first we have to classify the patient whether it's drug sensitive or drug resistant TB. We have to then follow the guidelines of that. Drug sensitive TB patients are given the in, P, uh, in the pulmonary cases, they should be treated for six months. In EPTB, there's the extra pulmonary cases. 
they can be treated for up to nine months uh, in case of coronal effusion and in case of pot spine that is the bone dv uh, frequently affecting the spine of the back uh, we can go up to 12 months also or maybe now again we have to do something as the end treatment evaluation you have to follow up with the patient you have to tell them to come to us you have to uh, if your patient is suffering from pulmonary TB, then you have to look, look at uh, his clinical resolution of symptoms. You have to look at his weight gain. You have to do some uh, serum inflammatory markers like CRP. You have to look at his radiology. And if there's resolution of the shadows which were not which were there previously, then we can, after six months, we can uh, take a uh, call for stopping TB. Uh, the intensive phase, uh, when you have started the patient of TB, uh, pulmonary TB on intensive phase, the guidelines say that we should do a repeat scoot of testing at the end of uh, intensive phase. So that covers the drug sensitive part for pulmonary tuberculosis. For extra pulmonary tuberculosis, the same uh, things we have to do, but what I usually prefer to uh, give a nine months completion treatment for all cases of uh, pleural effusion. Uh, and when we are uh, to, the patient is coming to us for end treatment evaluation, I am looking at the resolution of pleural effusion, I am looking at resolution of clinical symptoms, I am looking at weight gain. And then I'm, uh, after I'm satisfied with all this, then I can stop after nine months of treatment. In case of pot spine and all these uh, extra, uh, the bone TB uh, patients, the main thing is to uh, repeat the basic investigation which was done earlier, like the MRIs or the, or the CT scans or whatever which was done before. Look at the resolution of the paraventricular abscesses. And supposing if it is uh, still not resolving, it is still persisting or it is increasing in size, then we have to do the we have to repeat the, uh, the, uh, the drainage and again send it for testing. In case of TRTB, uh, it is uh, uh, the guidelines have a protocol that you have to keep on doing liquid culture DSTs. Uh, uh, in intensive phase, you have to do it uh, for the, every one monthly. Then we have to do it every second or third monthly. Uh, so that is there in for all the uh, MDR and PXGR uh, and XGR cases that is, is present in the chart. You have to just uh, follow it up accordingly. And the same clinical signs and symptoms and resolution of the previous disease has to be taken in place. Main thing is that after the uh, completion of drugs, the patient needs to be followed up also, uh, uh, especially in case of drug resistant TB for one or two years, where, where, where then we repeat the, uh, in the case of pulmonary TB, then we repeat the smooth of cultures. Something which is we have to look at the feasibility uh, 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 option also. We can't keep on doing uh, surgical drainages, but we can repeat smooth of easily. So it all varies from case to case. Thank you, Dr. Anji. Uh, next question is, uh, what is the current cost of WGS? So I would like to take this question. So current cost is about, say, 15 to 16,000, but there are so many labs, you know, which are, you know, giving this uh, test below the cost for 18 antibiotics. Uh, next question is again pointing to Dr. Anji. If it is a patient is already on all longer regimen, and if we need to select a drug from group C, should we prefer ethambutol according to order or paracetamide should be started? So uh, the guidelines say that you go as per the order, but I I uh, prefer paracetamide. Being a, a bactericidal drug, more effective drug, uh, I, I go for, I will obviously try to go for paracetamide. Okay. Thank you for that answer. Uh, Next question is uh, from Dr. Rubina. She would like to know which patient are eligible for whole genome sequencing. So, anyone? So, uh, I will say that all patients should be tested for whole genome sequencing, whether they are whether it's sensitive, whether it's in pulmonary TB, extrapolary TB, all samples. You have to find the appropriate sample. If it's a uh, case of uh, pulmonary TB, sputum, or if you can't take the sputum, then bar. In the case of a lymph node, then take a fine needle aspiration or the excision biopsy. In the case of pot spine, then do a USG guide or CT guide. But you have to subject all of these to, to WGS, which I think is a, like a replacement for uh, liquid culture now, uh, giving the same information and in more elaborate format, covering more antibiotics. And, so I would like to add one more uh, point here, Dr. Rubina. So most, uh, mostly if uh, we need to check whether it's a relapse case or any you know, treatment failure case where patient is not responding to the treatment should be preferred for whole genome sequencing. That's all, I guess. Uh, if 
it's already uh, 15 past two, eight, and uh, it's really nice experience. And already chat box it filled with the congratulations and nice, nice presentation feedback from the attendees. And uh, I thank uh, training team, Case Tech, IIT Bombay, Dr. Anchit, Dr. Soumya, and all the attendees and panelists for their patient listening. And I'm closing this session now. Thank you very much.